Welcome everyone to a new series I'm starting where I'm taking some of my previous challenge runs through the Phantom Liberty DLC in Cyberpunk. And for this run, I let my channel members vote and you guys decided on the 1 HP challenge to be the first one that I take through Phantom Liberty, which I feel like is very fitting because it was my very first challenge run video I ever made. Now, if you haven't watched my original 1 HP run, I would recommend it. This is going to be the exact same character and a sort of continuation of that run. Now, I will say, because it was my very first challenge run, it is a little rough on the edges. I was still learning how to do this whole YouTube thing, but still, it'll give you context for this run. Now, if you're curious about the rules for this run, it's simply that I have 1 HP. I'm not restricting myself on stealth and or having to take out all enemies in an encounter. Literally, the only rule is that I have 1 HP. Now, I do want to put up a spoiler warning, of course, because we are playing through all of Phantom Liberty. So if you don't want any spoilers, here's your warning. Before getting into the video, I do want to say a quick thank you to everyone. We just broke 50,000 subs and I couldn't be any more excited. I'm so thankful for all you guys and the support you guys have always shown me. I love the community that I'm building here. You guys are all great people, honestly. Now, last thing I promise, I officially released the emergency song. You know, the song that I made out of the cyberpunk siren that they decided to get rid of in the new update? Yeah, that one. It's out now on all major platforms. Also, if you're still looking for music, my friend and I just dropped another single called Letting Go. Now they are very polar opposite types of songs, but I am still very proud of both of them and how they turned out. It would mean the world to me if you guys would check these out. All right, I've talked long enough. Let's get into things. So the original one HP, which is right here, uh, I have it right at before it went to the end of the game, which I think we'll start here at the level 28 version of it. But I ended up actually taking it all the way to level 50 and made a build called the Jack of All Trades build. So there's a level 50 version of it. I don't know if I want to use that. I think it makes more sense to start right before the end of the game. Uh, but yeah, I think we'll start here. I do want to give you guys one quick little note. Uh, I, <laughs> I found a new mod that I installed that I think is going to make this extra interesting. A big string of mods that's been happening recently has been AI voice overhaul stuff. There was one that popped up today that really caught my attention. But yeah, so here's Mr. 1HP man straight from uh, 1.5 days. We're going to spend the first probably half hour or so getting set up. We have a pretty good weapon lineup already. All right, here, we'll, we'll get through the call. Can you hear me? Um... Uh, loud and clear, whoever you are. Good, it worked. My name is Somi. Just call me Songbird, though. All right, Songbird. <laughs> Got my full attention. Glad to hear that. Fine. No clue when I'm stepping into, but no risk, no reward. <laughs> Thank you. This is one elaborate haze or a fucking lifeline. <laughs> oh my gosh. Literally, I think this is my favorite mod to ever come out. I spend the next little bit here trying to figure out the new command that I need to get my health to 1 HP. If you don't know how I've been doing this previously was using the console to minus my health down to 1. And it took me and chat a while to find a command that actually worked. And honestly, the guy who found this out, props to you. I have no clue what this even means. But it works, so I'm going to take it. And with that, it's time to start building out my character, buying some things, and getting set up. You know, I don't know if I ever actually tried that. They added damage when you're driving. <laughs> I forgot. After being reminded of how scary driving is now, I run around the open world collecting all the free perk points and then run to a ripper to start getting myself set up. Now as for build, I'm going to be replicating my gunslinger build, taking heavy advantage of stealth. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna say I should go netrunner, but honestly, with one HP, I'm not gonna be able to use overclocking. And without overclocking, I think Netrunners just really can't do what they should. And with everything all set, we make our way into the Phantom Liberty DLC. What you got in the back? No. <laughs> oh, <all right. laughs> You're gonna be okay. Your nervous system took a big hit. Uh huh. Broke down. The, f the fuck you doing? <laughs> There's a trap. The president. Fuck. I. No, you're not joking. That's <laughs> serious. Yes. Right now, you're one contact on the ground. Okay, let's skip through it. With this initial conversation with Songbird, she basically tells us that if we help her and save the president, that she'll help us and deal with our relic issue. So after following her through this secret entrance into Dogtown, traversing our way through this parking garage, making sure to grab the free perk point, and eventually making it into the market. 
I make sure to sell some gear and go meet up with the game devs to grab yet another perk point. We then make our way to the top of the stadium to watch where Space Force One will land so we can go save the president. What? What's going on? What the hell? <laughs> Sunbird! Be the president! You have to... This is gonna be an adventure. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> Songbury. Songbury. Let rush. On my way. God speed me. Fire, fire. Yeah, new A pistol. Perfect. Mm, do we use this or the new A? Kind of leaning towards the new A potentially. Yeah, <laughs> V's corny one-liners are gonna be beautiful in this. Across the room, right straight ahead. Perfect. Cool. Stressful, dude. Oh, I did. I didn't take damage, but this is gonna happen a lot until I get used to it. I knew it. I Hold up. I'm gonna die right now. Okay. <laughs> After I reload, right away. I have to do it right away. I'm just looking at the mini map, giving it a shot. the walls? Only I'm supposed to do that. Quick save. Okay. I swear, if Rosalind Myers tackling me is gonna kill me, Get inside quick. that'd be funny. Fuel tanks in anyone alive? Nobody jumped that to greet me. Keep moving back. You'll see a safe room. I'll pop the release on the door. No. No. Hello. Not one move. Who are you? Name's V. Here to help you. Apologies. I had to be sure it was really you. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. Ugh, damn it! They just won't let up! Okay. <laughs> Ooh, that almost hit me. Just hold up, Rosalind. Oh, it's down. Okay, good. Oh, 
Oh, did we get them all? Oh no, the game just put me out of combat. I was to say, Roslyn must have been going crazy. I dropped a save right there. I got out of combat for a split second. Oh, heat shot a burst. <laughs> I saw it coming. I was trying to move. Save. Ooh. I don't need that. How's the sitch? We're alive. Both of us. With the president safe with us, we slowly start to push our way through these buildings, taking dudes down the stealthy way, and eventually making our way out of this building and sneaking our way to our destination. As Sobery guides us into this museum, and we make it into what I consider to be the hardest fight of this entire DLC. All right, here comes the big fight. Just across the room. This is the one I'm probably the most scared of in this entire huh. mission, or in this entire well, campaign, warehouse. literally. I think this is going to be the Gotta worst. Gotta find an elevator, other side of the room. I'm trying to think of where I can potentially, like, hide. <laughs> like, maybe... This feels dangerous, but it's possible. Is that an explosive thing? That's an explosive thing. Okay, take note. I can use invisibility to get out of combat and potentially drop a quick save. I don't know if it'll let me. Okay, he goes. V, do you hear that? Hey, bad news this time. Hanson's dogs caught your scent. Uh huh. Assault incoming. It forced me into combat. Love it. Myers, we gotta engage him. Song's on the case. Oh. I literally didn't even get a shot. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, hey, how you doing? Ooh. <laughs> Dude, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is what you guys voted for, by the way. All my members voted for this, so. So yeah, to say this was tough is kind of an understatement. To give you an idea of how hard this room was, I have three and a half hours of footage just in this room. This was a six hour stream and over half of it was spent sitting in this room trying to come up with a solution. I tried as many things as I could think of. I tried initially just hiding. I tried to see if maybe I could kill a couple of the beginning guys to get rid of a couple of people so it was easier to survive. And then I thought of a new idea, which was using the perk that gives you 100% mitigation when you're dashing. So I started dashing around the room like a madman and trying my best to stay away from enemies and not get hit. And to my surprise, it actually was working decently well. But of course, the sheer number of enemies still made it basically impossible. And then I thought of a new idea using this mitigation. It's a little longer. A little longer. Sandy. Go invisible. Hide in the corner. Drop a quick save. Starting to heat up in here, Songbird. Working on it. Hold on tight. No. Keep your eyes open! <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Wait, if I can do this, uh, like, this cycle again, I'll run around in circles, wait for my cooldowns, and reactivate it again. Because I do think it's a timed thing, I don't think it's a kill enemies thing. Feeling like I have a pretty solid plan in place, I continue to do this for over an hour and a half before eventually deciding I need to clear out some of the enemies so that there's less enemies in the room, I have less of a chance of getting hit, it just felt like a smarter idea. So I try actually attacking some enemies and finding that I just can't do near enough damage to do anything because almost every enemy in this encounter is a skull type enemy, the hardest they can be basically. So after chatting with you guys and being stuck in this room for two and a half hours, we decided to go back to the start of the run, pull out my level 50 version of this build. I then did the exact same set of things, went and grabbed all the free perk points. I made sure to grab the Apogee Sandy this time because it's cracked and then spent some time making sure I had some decent weapons with me this time. While on my way to save Myers, I made sure to grab this iconic rifle 
played out this entire section pretty much exactly the same, made it back to the same room, and started giving it a couple more tries, this time with more damage. Now basically what I'm trying to do here is kill as many enemies as possible only while I have my Sandy active. Otherwise I'm dashing around the room using the mitigation to make sure I don't get hit and every so often I'm trying to go invisible to get out of combat, drop a quick save and stay safe. I timed how long it would have taken for a successful run if I were to do it perfect first try and this entire encounter should only take two and a half minutes. So yeah, three and a half hours and uh, two and a half minutes. Yeah, that adds up real well. This room was brutal. Myers, we gotta engage him. Song's on the case. Dropping a quick save. Okay, put me back in combat. Okay, okay, we got like, we're, we're part way in, so this hopefully should be faster now. I'm hidden, I'm hidden. Quick saving. Please don't spot me, please don't spot me. Quick save again. Let's freaking go. <laughs> Now for the crazy boss fight. Sober? What's with you? Sobered? <laughs> oh no! Not looking good! Quick save. Oh shit! It'll Sober focus her, which I want to happen because I will literally die from one bullet, so. There we go. Music goes so hard. Fucking move, damn it. There, got it. SpongeBob swearing is probably one of the best things they could have added to this. Ooh. 
Please no, please no. You want to play rough? Gonna get rough. <laughs> I love this. I love it so much. Okay, Chimera fight. One immovable wall to the next. Let's go. <laughs> New room to be stuck in. <laughs> Don't get right. Wonder if I could lose it. Nah, no, not really. Okay, got it, got it, got it. When I hear the charge up, that's that's the like that's the death. I can't believe I didn't get hit. Concentrate your fire on the drones. I'll cover you. V, you okay there? I'm gonna regain so much health. I didn't know it was coming. I, oh, I. You want more? It seems to alternate between the laser and the missiles in this mode. I keep getting caught on stuff and it's scary. I should activate my Sandy when it's shooting the laser because I don't have a bigger window. I'm clenching. <laughs> Watch the laser. Jump on top and finish it, V. The sucker's gonna blow. Kill it now. Oh, let's go. Jeez. My ass. Oh, yes, yeah. what a finale. Close call that, eh? Good team, Warry. <laughs> okay.
With the Chimera finally done, the hardest part of the entire DLC was finished, which is honestly such a relief. The president and I then make our way through the sewers and eventually up into this tower, get the power turned on, and say hello to our new friends Jacob and Taylor. And after taking a quick nap, we have a conversation with Myers where she instates us a part of the NUSA. At this point, I'd been streaming 6 hours and decided to wrap up my stream for the day and pick it up the next morning. Starting up my stream the next morning, I noticed I had a message from a community member in my Discord. Basically, after stream, a couple people in my Discord started chatting about a better command to use to just keep my health at one. And after one community member, Guacstick, wrote a bunch of code, Time Waster then put it together and made a mod for me that basically every time I scope in my weapon, my health automatically resets down to one. This saved me so much headache and so much time because I don't have to open the console anymore, change my health manually, it just simplified this and I'm super thankful to these two. I then go to a specific location on the map where I know a new A pistol always spawns and if you're high enough level it'll end up being a 5++ variation of it. And so I spend the time to make sure to get a 5++ with no mods in it so I can put the ones I want. At this point I decide to run around and start doing some gigs for Mr. Hands. You see at one point in the main quest of this DLC you need to call up Mr. Hands and you are required to have at least done three different gigs for him. While doing some gigs, I had a couple funny moments like driving my car a little too fast into another. Also while doing the gigs, I run to some vendors to go grab some weapon mods to get this thing set up the way I want to. I end up buying enough to get the weapon mod packs and equalizer up to the legendary tier. Now because shooting through walls is so advantageous for me, I also go take on one of these challenge areas to go grab the SMG Raiju. And of course with stealth and the power of shooting through walls with Widowmaker, this mission isn't too bad. At this point, feeling pretty set up with Raiju, a stealth pistol, and Widowmaker, I spend the couple perk points I got from leveling up, and then proceed to follow up with the main questline, and go give Idris Alba a call. He then tells us to meet up at this basketball court, where he proceeds to just continually look down on us because we're just a merc. We both then begin to make our way to meet up with the president, and I guess because I got caught by a camera in the tunnels from the Chimera... How does Satan's balls in here? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> ah, how does Satan's balls in me? I get into this combat scenario. It literally makes no sense to me that I get caught on a camera, can spend days doing other stuff, and then the game is still like, oh yeah, you were followed. But anyways, we get through this combat, we end up finding out that Jacob and Taylor died in the exchange, helping protect President Myers. Hats off to those boys. With that wrapped up, we have to wait two days for Reed to call us up, so I decide to go do the final gig I need to do to complete the three required for the main mission. Wait the couple days required, get the call from Reed to go meet up with Alex, who's a former team member who apparently is just deep undercover. Yeah, I'm sure. And so we head to the bar to meet up with them. What'll it be? No booze, thanks. Make it a Nicole. <laughs> Nicole is. Very, very SpongeBob. <laughs> cool gun, Alex. Disarm. Hey, what the hell? Relax. Just want to talk this through. Let's go, SpongeBob. <laughs> After having a nice, quiet conversation with these two, we get the tip from Alex of a runner nearby named Slider. And so Reed and I head out to go meet up with this Slider. And because I didn't put any restrictions on combat in this run, I take heavy advantage of optical camo and just sneak my way to where he's hiding out. After making it inside the hideout to meet up with Slider, he connects us with Songbird and we get some details on what to do next before Slider ends up dying from the AI of the black wall. And now Reed and I need to make our way out of the hideout. I haven't ever gotten in here without killing everyone, so I'm curious how this will go now. But I think if I just activate invisibility and Sandy, and then just sprint like a madman through everybody, I should be chill. <laughs> wow. Ooh, it was really stressing there, guys. Reed and I have a quick conversation outside the hideout and talk about what Sobery told us to do, which is to get inside the Black Sapphire. Of course, without an invitation, we can't go, so we reach out to our good pal Mr. Hands, which of course we've done the three gigs required to allow this to progress. Mr. Hands tells us to wait a few hours for him to get back to us, and so I decide to go take on another one of these challenge areas to go get my favorite sniper in this game currently, Sparky. 
With this build feeling very dialed in, I make my way through the building, stealth killing most of the guys, and then ping the drone, sit outside, and shoot with a Widowmaker through walls until it dies. I finish looting the area and grab the iconic Sparky. With that wrapped up, I wait the few hours required for Mr. Krabs to call us up, and we go meet up with him at the Heavy Hearts Club. After a nice chat with Mr. Hands, he gives us the information we need. I then deliver the information to Reed and go meet up with him and Alex to go establish a plan to get into the Black Sapphire. With a plan in place, I get suited up, jump into the sewers, and proceed to push my way into the building. I clear out these couple guys, help Reed get inside the building, and then make my way up the tower to neutralize the sniper. While in control of the sniper, we have to do this whole sequence where we gotta help Reed sneak his way through all these enemies, and honestly, it's kinda just this long, drawn-out section where you're forced to do what the game tells you to. And of course, at the very end, just wanting to speed things up, I try to take out these last two guys and fail to do so correctly and have to clear out this entire area. With all of them down, Reed and I meet up, ride a final elevator to get into the party, and make sure to get dressed up before entering it. Inside, we're basically just looking for Songbird. So bird, so bury. Sombre, come on. Finally, jeez. Uh, take it forever. Doubt I've ever seen a prisoner parade around in a cocktail dress at a swanky party. <laughs> Not to mention being hella friendly with their cat there. It's a charade. <laughs> Doing. Uh, SpongeBob cursing. It's just something else. <laughs> really need to go now. Yeah, we're trying to get that Krabby Patty formula, you know? <laughs> After having a conversation with Songbread, she tells us to go grab some information on these two netrunners that we'll need to impersonate in order to get close to Kurt Hansen. We then go meet up with Reed and have a little debrief sesh. And with that, Alex and Reed basically just tell us to go gambling. While gambling, we scan these twins to learn how to impersonate them, and I prove to chat that if you just spam click your way through this thing, it auto-completes at 100% no matter what. I really don't think you can fail this thing, especially since Aurora's went from 48 all the way to 100% right at the very end. And of course, we won the bets and got the money. The big bad Kurt then walks up to us, tells us he's onto us, before we head over to cash in our chips and get the money. Reed and I then leave the Black Sapphire, and after waiting a day, we go back to our hideout to meet up with Alex and Reed to discuss our next steps. With a plan set in place, I have a decent amount of money now after winning that game, and so I decide to spend it getting my cyberware a little more set up so I can do more damage. Alex then asks us to run around and access these tracking stations, and while doing so, we get a call from Sobery asking to meet up with us. We then go meet up with her, and as Reed suspected, yes, she was the one who actually caused the crash of Space Force 1. We get told her story that basically the president was telling her to breach the black wall to gather information, which was corrupting her, and tells us that she's in a very similar situation to us, where she has a timer on her head until she'll die. Finishing the conversation, we call up Reed, tell him about the conversation, and then go meet up with him to go get a fancy new piece of cyberware that lets us morph ourselves into another person. And with that, it's time to start the next mission. After sitting in this vantage point and scanning the car that the twins are driving, we hop into the trunk of the car and hack into it to take control of it and eventually take the twins to where Reed and Alex are. Love. What in the fuck? <laughs> fuck, you wiped them. <laughs> we then grab the mainframe access off of Aurora, put on the Netrunner outfit, and then turn on our disguise. Sadly, at this point, we lose the SpongeBob voice, which makes this mission so boring, it's kind of lame. With our disguises on, Alex and I make our way into the stadium to meet up with Kurt Hansen, and then go meet up with Songbird to put the access codes into this thing. Now, at this point, we get given two choices that ends the game in two completely different ways. And thinking about the 1 HP run and what will be the easiest for me to accomplish, I feel betraying Songbird and siding with Reed will be the best solution for this run. Kurt, we have a problem. No, I can handle the one down here. Really expected this to work? So me! Wait! No. Ah, you... You don't know what you're doing! Oh, but I do know me. Doing what I have to to survive. Not Alex! What? What? Why are you doing this? Trying to save so me. Blackwall's eating your mind. You understand nothing. Two faces. Oh.
Her death. All of this. It's on you. What was that? With our decision made, I come up to the next section I think will be extremely difficult for this run. Getting out of the stadium. Oh, whoa. That's, I mean, we're, rock and roll. <laughs> That's my gun. <laughs> combat, why am I in combat? She fought back. Reach past the black wall. Elevators, football. Go to the market. I'll see you on the other side. Oh, he's really tanky. I mean, can I just run to the market what exit? You need to move. Quick. Okay. Got out of combat. Drop a save. Fuck. <gasps> oh no. Fucker! <laughs> Him and his LMG is going to be such an issue. Really? You had a chance. <laughs> oh no! Can you stay out there? Like, will you not come in here? I mean, if you're not gonna come in here, I'm just gonna chill right here. <laughs> oh no, Kurt. Oh no, Kurt. <laughs> Does he throw his knife or? I've always killed him so fast, but I've never actually like had an issue. You know, I was really scared of this section, but I feel like I didn't need to be, you know? Like, I really don't think I needed to be. Myers ever wants me to take her seriously. She'd do better to send in Black Ops. I don't know if you faced the cheese, so I don't know if you understand what's happening right here. <laughs> no, what? Why did you mantle? I mean, that's that's totally doable. Like that's, I just literally circled that pillar forever. As long as I don't mantle like an idiot, I think I'm good. Big fucking mistake. Yeah. He threw it through the wall. He totally threw it through the wall. This fucker. Scary. Scary Kurt Hansen. <laughs> oh, 
wonder if I can get out of combat now. Like, and drop a save. No, they still won't let me drop a save. Okay, let's wait for our Sandy. Make sure everything's reloaded. Change direction on me. No, 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 no. Now it's just done. Sheesh. Okay. You know what? I'll give you credit, dude. Fuck. You were actually kind of tough. Die town outbound. I thought that was going to be a lot easier. My ass. With Kurt finally down, we make our way out of the stadium with Reed and watch as Songbird is taken in by MaxTac. After grabbing some information through Mr. Hands, we then set up a plan with Reed to set up a surprise attack on a MaxTac convoy to try and get Songbird back. Okay, this is the last hurdle. If we get past this, it's pretty much game over. Like Songbird? We... How the hell you? Not bad. Okay. Dude, uh, I wanted to ping them all and then I was just gonna go hide behind a building. Let's go. Focus up. Do this as long. We're wasting time. Check on Sunburn. Okay, this is gonna be tricky. I'm going to try to boost over there once I get these guys out and then try to just snipe them all. Okay. Quick save. I'm at the truck, Reed. Careful now. Watch. Who the fuck are you? SpongeBob. <laughs> Oh, I knew it. I knew it in my brain. This is what I was worried about. <laughs> this isn't good, guys. This isn't good. Can I activate this I'm during this cutscene? No, it pulls me out. Okay. Let's get to work. I'm gonna spam. Spam X. <gasps> oh, I got it active. Oh. I activated my second, my Sandy for a second because I was spamming it. I just gotta time it just right. Let's go. Ooh. Why was it doing that? When we're done with you, your family's next. Out of range. Draw it out. Okay, they can't lose me. Got it. All right. This is okay. This is doable. This is doable. This is so doable. Here they come. Let's go. Watch what I'm talking about. It's out of the way. Try to. No. <laughs> Let's get to work. Ah, uh, he's so annoying. He's just standing there with a shotgun or whatever. Gaming used to be like, let me shut down mentally and not think for a while. So to all of a sudden have to turn on, turn on mentally was really difficult for me. Oh, it let me save. Huge. Yeah, they're not even coming over here. Oh, we're so good. Nice, one down. Ah, I was trying to ping him. What, she heal? Oh, she healed. That's not good. Okay, Dallas Foster down. 
Oh, he heals too. That's not good. What about you? Do you heal? Oh, they all heal. Oh, you're so annoying. You shouldn't be able to do that when I have mine active too, dude. Their healing must be on the cooldown. Okay. That's obnoxious. No! Stop healing! That's so obnoxious. It's slowly keeping it down, though, but still. Oh. I'm so tough after all. Agreed, SpongeBob. Dude, why can that gun not shoot after Sandy? Okay. Oh. We did it. That's pretty much a dub right there. We'll play this out for sure because I think this ending is probably my favorite. Just in terms of like story and stuff, it's so cool. Finally, with Max Sack down, that was the last fight in the entire DLC. From here on out, it's mostly story stuff and probably one of my favorite segments in the entire DLC, the chase sequence. Although I would have loved a good boss fight at the end of this, it's still such a cool sequence. Oh, the song, dude. Oh. <laughs> Not fully. Not me. Sobri. Songbread. Songbread. Songbird? Dang, he said both of those correct. Ah, boring. Gotta get to sell me for the black wall does. Saber. Trusted. No, Songbird. <laughs> oh. I don't want to. I could have made that. Data terms. Could disable them. Brief connection. Kill remote control. Won't let me through, huh? Guess I'll just have to jack you out of these systems. It's funny hearing SpongeBob like so methodical sounding. <laughs> spooky time. Spooky. Spooky scary. No, Songbird. This ends now. <laughs> One day to turn left. Suck that metal monstrosity doesn't zero me first. Oh no, it just leaves. Okay, cool. Dome. But guess you knew that, didn't you? <laughs> that voice line hits different with SpongeBob. <laughs> it's funny because it's still technically in the owl or like the duck thing. I think it just doesn't. Come on, it has come to on, finish that okay. animation. <laughs> it teleported. That's cheating. Oh, so sick. Oh. It's such a good reveal, dude. Need another way to disable it. Gotta find it fast. <laughs> Dang, those voice cracks. Okay. Oh, 
here it is. Data port sent you command. Rob consoling songbird. I need to let this play out. Not gonna let you die, so me. We'll make it out of here. Together. Thank you. The black wall. We have just seconds. What? So me, where? The core. Look for me there and help me. Alive. All right, guys. What are we choosing? Honestly, that cutscene kind of makes it you realize, like, she technically has lost, like, all of her memories, which is actually so sad. Uh, which one do you guys want? <laughs> you guys are saying kill, not, not like, euthanize? Pull the plug? Yeah, there you go. That's a spare. <laughs> Get the I XP really from her. <laughs> it looks like a lot of you guys want me to quickly. let her go. Always been we your choice. We some salutes in me. chat. See you, so bread, so bree. To get around. I feel like I want to chew out the the, right. the president as SpongeBob. Let's get moving. <laughs> we gotta get to the president. I gotta chew her out. Fuck you, mice. Done with your bullshit. Let's wrap up this charade. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> no, you can't take anything serious yeah, yeah, with this voice. It's so hard. <laughs> I'm ready for this. Maybe all the shit crowns fucking hot. <laughs> Think you're all looking for something different. It's such a dumb line. Why did they add that in the game? It's so dumb. <laughs> Man, cursing out the president was kind of satisfying, wasn't it? Anyways, there it is. My first Phantom Liberty challenge run. I honestly had a ton of fun doing this one, and I honestly think it's really funny how the hardest part of this entire thing was the very beginning first mission with the Chimera boss fight in that whole arena. It was insane to me. I had a lot of fun doing this run, and I'm really thankful to everybody who hung out in the streams with me and got to just experience the madness that is SpongeBob running through Cyberpunk. There are a lot of voice lines I had to cut, obviously, to make this all shorter, but it is so funny all the things that SpongeBob says. I would highly recommend getting this mod if you play PC. Anyways, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.